Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's so nice to have you here. It's, uh, I tried for the wind to die down a little bit, but I didn't win on that one. So it is uh, great to have you here for our, I'm going to, dare I say it, our turkey barbecue all face service. I know we didn't have the barbecue, but uh, here we are together. Uh, thank you to Pastor Chris for being here from the community church. and. He's going to be doing a few things. We have some special music for you. We have some song together. If you don't have a bulletin, put your hand in the air, I, unless I ran out. But if you need one, Wyatt will come around. Reach in the basket, grab a bulletin, share if we have to. If we run out, hallelujah. A couple, uh, just a... I have a specific announcement for, for the uh, Lutheran folks. If you want anything in the newsletter, please get that to the office. Uh, I'm going to work on that. The offering that we're going to take today, you, there's not a spot in the bulletin for offering, but when I uh, talk about that, uh, any loose offering that uh, isn't designated to your church will go to benefit uh, Aneta Parkview. So um, know that the loose offering will go there. We do have uh, food and fellowship after our service, um, and we'll get some more instructions as we get closer to the end of the service on that uh, as they put things together. Is there anything else that we need to bring forward? Can everybody hear me even as far reaches out that way? Good. I talk loud, so. This squirrel up here is thinking about what's going on. Well, if there are no more announcements, let us begin with our call to worship. Gather us in, the brokenhearted and the joyful. Gather us in, the weak and the strong. Gather us in, the fearful and the brave. Gather us in, the young and the old. Gather us in, to sing of God's works. Gather us in, to praise Jesus Christ. Gather us in to worship and wonder. Gather us in to know God's love. Together we sing, All hail the power of Jesus' name.
opening prayer. Creating God, we gather in your name to worship you. We give thanks that there is a small spark of God within us. Kindle that small spark into a flame of love and service sustaining God. We gather in your name to worship you. We celebrate your loving presence of God in our life. May God's loving presence be a strong influence in our lives. Nurturing God, we gather in your name to worship you. We rejoice that God teaches us about love and forgiveness. As we grow in faith, trust, and love for God, may our worship, witness, and service bring honor to God's holy name. Amen. The Combs children would like to come up here. Thank you. 
now do our scripture reading from Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, if you would turn with me. And if you're able, let's stand in respect for the reading of God's word. Israel's only Savior, Isaiah 43. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom. Cush and Shabbat in your stead. Now reading up from the psalm. We'll be reading Psalm 121. Psalm 121. A song of accident. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and and forever. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. There is an ancient Chinese proverb and a curse that states this. May you live in interesting times. Currently, we are certainly living in interesting times. We may even feel cursed that in, and in a desperate need of an antidote for our interesting times. But thankfully, as Christians, we can find a wealth of antidotes in the Bible because Scripture is the living and powerful Word of God. It is in our present dilemma. Paul's letter to the Philippians is Word of God to us because it points to a true source of hope in tough times. However, we may be surprised at the guidance the scripture truly gives us. This message is based on uh, Philippians chapters 3 and 4, various texts. And so in Philippians 4, Paul writes these words, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Perhaps today you think there's little reason to rejoice. With all that is going on in our world, with, with death and sickness and unrest and violence. Yet when Paul penned this advice, he was in the midst of tough times himself. He was in prison and had every reason to be discouraged and bitter. But nevertheless, he says to us, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. In fact, in this short letter to the early church of Philippi, Paul expresses or recommends rejoicing over nine times. What we discover here is Paul's letter is that his original reason for rejoicing radically changed as a result of his faith in Christ. Before he knew Christ, Paul rejoiced in his own personal success. He was a Pharisee and well-respected as a righteous man in his Jewish community. Yet he came to see the signs of success as 
worthless and he willingly gave them up to follow Christ. Listen to these words as he rejoices over losing his former success in gaining relationship with Jesus. Philippians 3, 7 through 9 says, Yet whatever gain I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ, Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. Paul's experience proved to him that faith in Jesus Christ yields treasure that worldly success can never equal because of God's love, care, and forgiveness are received solely through Christ Jesus. And in the same way, we also can find joy and comfort in the blessings that we have in Christ, even in the face of present time. In this time when we may be gripped with worries, whether it's over the economy and, or fears of what might be going on in our nation, in our world, Paul's letter brings living word of God for us as it be brings sound advice through the scripture and good news. Paul wrote again in Philippians 4, Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. That passage from Philippians, if any of you have followed our daily devotion, I've used several times. You see, instead of wasting time worrying, God's word in, in this scripture advises us to invest in habits of prayer, of thankfulness, knowing that the return of his investment will be the peace of God that passes all understanding. So instead of running on a treadmill of worry and finding your heart constricted by fear and your mind filled with anxiety, pace yourself with the habits of prayer and thanksgiving. Because then, the peace of God will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. When our hearts and minds are protected by peace in Christ, we find and inner calm and we stop playing the useless mental game of ain't it awful you see we even stop searching for someone to blame and find freedom to reinvest reinvest our mental energy in the productivity through Paul's emphasized when he said in Philippians 4 he said finally beloved Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is comfortable, even there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. You see, through faith in Jesus and the blessing of living as his disciples, we really can find an unlimited wealth of honor, of purity, authentic pleasure, and excellence, as well as a bounty of commendable and praiseworthy solutions in life through our tough time. See, this scripture teaches us to pray and to give thanks rather than to simply worry. It instructs us to think about the goodness and we find in Christ. As we do these things, we will become calm. We'll find breathing room to discover the secret of true and realistic contentment, the kind of contentment that withstands the ups and the downs of our life, the kind of contentment in a world where 
he sees so much unrest. Paul found this to be true, and it led him to the real source of strength in life. He testifies to this in the 11th chapter. For I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and of being in need. I can do all this through him who strengthens me. Through tough times in our lives, we have God. We have God's word. We have the strength of God's scripture. We can't know what the future will hold, what the outcome of this unrest in our country will be, what this virus truly will wind up doing. So now, now is the perfect time to look to Jesus Christ as our source of strength and we'll find our life secured in the blessings of peace and contentment that only Christ can bring. So when you find your heart troubled, turn to Christ. Let Jesus into your life. Hear these words. Now, as always, is the time to rejoice in what the Lord has given us. Thanks be to God. Amen. this time, I would like Mallory to come up. She has a special song for us.
We'll now uh, speak the Nicene Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Since today is Father's Day, I thought it was fitting that we should uh, say uh, a prayer for our fathers. So if you are a father and you are here, happy Father's Day to you. It is uh, good that you are all here. Um, so let us pray. Let us praise those fathers who have striven to balance the demands of work, of marriage, and children with an honest awareness of both joy and sacrifice. Let us praise those fathers who, lacking a good model for a father, have worked to become a good father. Let us praise those fathers who, by their own account, were not always there for their children, but who continue to offer those children, now grown, their love and support. Let us pray for those fathers who have been wounded by the neglect and hostility of their children. Let us praise those fathers who, despite divorce, have remained in their children's lives. Let us praise those fathers whose children are adopted and whose love and support has offered healing. Let us praise those fathers who, as stepfathers, freely choose the obligation of fatherhood and earn their stepchildren's love and respect. Let us praise those fathers who have lost a child to death and continue to hold that child in their heart. Let us praise those men who have no children but cherish the next generation as if they were their own. Let us praise those men who have fathered us in their role as a mentor and a guide. Let us praise those men who are about to become fathers. May they openly delight in their children. And let us praise those fathers who have died, but live on in our memory, and those whose love continue to nurture us. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, we will have what I like to call a processional offering. So if you have an offering to give, whether it's to your church or to uh, the greater good, I invite you at this time to make your way up. We have a basket down here and place it in that basket.
Please bow your heads with me. Oh God, it occurs to us that our prayers are sometimes one-sided. So today our prayer is not only for the usual things we pray for, but for the opposite things. We pray today not only for the sick, but for the well. Let the pride rule happy hearts. We pray not only for the poor, but we also pray for the rich who find it so hard to enter the kingdom of heaven. We pray not only for the troubled, but we also pray for the favored, lest peace in the world be confused with peace of God. We pray not only for the dying, but we also pray for the living, since they will face eternity as well. We pray not only for the buried, but for the casual, lest innocence rot the soul. We pray not only for the president for our country, but we also pray for the people. The people, yes, because they are the ones who pay for the misrule when it comes. We pray not only for the missionaries in foreign shores, but also for the rest of us who still don't know that Christ, there is no east or west, no north or south, but the great human family in the house that grows smaller and smaller by the years. We pray not only for the ministers of the gospel, but also for the people of the gospel, since we all who believe are called to be doers of the word, not hearers only. We pray not only for the fair weather, but also for the bad weather, since nature is impartial and often allowing human estates of good and bad, and that it would not only count. We pray not only for sinners to turn to be saved, but also for the rest of us who think that we have no sin and are a greater need of patience and healing. And finally, Lord, we pray not only for others, but we also pray for ourselves because salvation and righteousness begins at the household of God. Amen.
I invite you to stand for the benediction. Be glad in the Lord always. Focus your thoughts on all that is true, all that is holy, all that is just, all that is pure, all that is lovely, and all that is worthy of praise. And the peace of God, peace that goes far beyond anything we can comprehend, the peace will guard your heart and mind as you live in Christ Jesus. So go from here with confidence and joy to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I would invite Joan forward at this time. She's going to give you a little instructions uh, before we sing our table grace. Welcome, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Well, we have lots of great meals, lots of good uh, items from Potluck. I counted about uh, 90 people, maybe there's 100. And so I'm gonna try to achieve uh, a COVID buffet as it's unheard of right now having any kind of buffets, even in restaurants. So uh, I would like you to follow the following recommendations. Um, I will be at the front of the serving line and I will hand you packets of silverware uh, and your napkin. And then I will be putting a glove on each of you. We do not have enough people to serve each individual pot, so I will, you'll hold the plate in one hand, and then you will dish from all the, all the different varieties with your gloved hand. When you get to the water station, my friend Joy will hand you the bottle of water and you ditch your glove in the basket. So we have one glove per hand, and I would appreciate it if kids under 12 would remain seated and you parents pick up the foods for them. Uh, it's not, uh, I just feel when I've done a lot of research on it, that most of the buffets at least uh, discourage the kids coming up because just the awkwardness with holding the glove and, and pouring up things, and we just want to keep you as safe and as comfortable as possible. So um, I certainly invite all of you to stay if you can, but if you're not comfortable, I, we understand if you're going to go home too. So um, I will be dismissing you according to tables. Uh, the tables of family members that are grouped, probably the largest table. Uh, we'll start first with the largest group. So um, I'll probably go with, uh, I was thinking Pastor Combs was still here with your children. So Pastor Combs and your family, I would like to start with you and then we'll go that direction with tables on this side, on the north side of the picnic uh, shelter. And then we'll take the next group with Vern and Arlene and we'll start that table and we'll take the south end towards the end. So I will tell you when to come. I don't want big groups standing there because it's gonna be hard to be six feet between. Uh, so I just uh, enjoy yourselves, but just let's try to um, protect others and protect ourselves. Thank you. Let's sing our table grace. We are called. If you want to sit, you can.
Thank you all for coming. I hope you have a blessed day, and we will start uh, with our food. Thank you again for coming.